This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. Who's there? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a guy. That bell. It's... You know, I think there's enough... Sir Han Dogen! There's enough of them there. See, dog jumps on his back. Oh. You! Why are you here? How can you just brazenly show up here? Who do you think you are, pal? Because remember, Dogen broke out of jail. Yes, he did. I found the conversation most intriguing, and I just... <laughs> well... Heh, are you feeling nostalgic about an old murder of yours? You're the one who killed Juan! <laughs> Nostalgia? I think not. You were speaking about the person I am searching for. You're searching for someone? I escaped from prison in order to meet with a young acolyte. The one who wore the red raincoat. The red raincoat? Wh who is this person? I suspect it's the same person as the mastermind you are searching for. It's just Misty Faye. <laughs> Someone you've been searching for. The one in the Red Hood. The Red Hood? Don't they seem surprised, Anubis? Yes, yes they are, my boy. I like how Anubis still looks <laughs> like a normal dog. <laughs> yeah. Twelve years ago, this young acolyte saved my life. <sighs> Bro, can you get pupils? That'd be cool. <laughs> He's blind. Do <sighs> Dogen Savior. Certainly, it was I who killed President Juan. However, my life was also targeted on that day. The body double, Blaze, and Patricia all sought to seal my lips. Had I not been reunited with the young acolyte back then, I would have been in danger. But alas, even to this day, I do not know what has become of the young acolyte. What, is Dogen now on our side? So your client was indeed the body double who was the main perpetrator of the crime. <laughs> it was a long time ago, but I remember his words even now. There have been countless attempts on my life. Not just once or twice, countless! And yet, why must I be the only one to face the danger? When I stand before the people, I garner the same respect as the president does. Tell me, just what is the difference between him and me? You sound like Donkey Kong if he doesn't. The difference was great. While well, the voice and style of speech may be the same. <laughs> One can mimic the body, but the heart cannot be reproduced. I suppose his own weaknesses cost him in the quest to become a leader. Now that Rook's gone, I'm in charge! I'm not sure if you're as capable as Rook was. What are you saying? I'm totally the leader now! Hmm. Perhaps the cane and his knight were not so different after all. The double believed that the president's only weakness was a woman called Amy. To find the woman, he needed the assistance of someone from this country. So, he joined forces of Blaze. After determining her whereabouts, he simply waited for the right opportunity. That chance came with the meeting at the orphanage. Indeed. The director of the orphanage was bribed and brought in as an accomplice. He must be referring to Patricia Rowland. Hey, do you mind if we schedule a kidnapping slash murder on your property? Absolutely uh, not! I'll give you two twenties. Okay. Alright. I mean, if she got, like, a cut of that hundred million, then... That's true. Even if it was, like, a one one hundred, probably, that would be pretty tempting. Yeah. Well, given what I've told you, do you realize the whereabouts of the young acolyte now? You mean the boy who saved you? But how do you know that he is the mastermind? That day, the young one caused a fire at the garden of the orphanage. <gasps> You're talking about the kid who started the fire as a prank! A prank? <laughs> Not at all. On that night 12 years ago, the young acolyte was hiding inside of the bear glue. <laughs> <laughs> the bag. It seemed he witnessed Patricia and Blaze moving the body from his hiding place. Man, that kid stinks. Apparently he heard them talking during that time. It would seem that they were planning to kill me because I knew the truth. He immediately came to the main hall to tell me that. I learned this about the young acolyte some time later. It seems he was wearing a red raincoat at the time. 
Maybe he grew up? He led me out of the main hall. What? And then the young acolyte said he was going to get rid of our footprints. So he scattered some lamp oil near the igloo over the snow. Then he boldly set the oil ablaze. <gasps> no way! So he set the fire in order to... All their focus was diverted towards the burning flames. I took the opportunity to escape through the rear exit. So, the boy in the red raincoat is the mastermind behind this case? Exactly. Isn't that right, Anubis? Yes, boy, yes it is. I mean... <sighs> I wonder who this kid is. Maybe it's Cody all grown up. <laughs> Cody grown up? Dogen's savior. Certainly it was I who killed President Fuha. I killed Mufasa! <laughs> you admitted that rather easily. These days I have long grown tired of killing. <laughs> Except the rats that come into my cell, they suck. <laughs> but in those how what the heck is that Halcyon? word? Halcyon? I've never seen that word before, That's a word and that I've played means... this game before. That's a word that means peaceful. <laughs> but in those Halcyon days, I devoted myself to the path of an executioner. If one cannot admit that much, what can he admit? Right, Anubis? Yes, yes, my boy. I feel like he's saying something scary, but it's kind of hard to understand him. This fallen priest is saying that he has no feelings about the president's death. Dogen, the assassin and escaped prisoner. He should be a despicable opponent, but... Silencing him now would be imprudent. I must keep my composure and let him talk. I'm surprised we're not having wizard's chess or whatever with him. <laughs> logic chess? Logic chess. Our last logic chess was with Sebastian. I understand your point. You killed the president. That is correct. The aim of my blade never misses its mark. However, my life was also targeted on that day. Your life was targeted? You, the assassin? The hunter became, becomes the hunted. The Buddhist becomes the Buddha. Kay, you don't have to make up strange proverbs. Life is transient. Especially for an assassin whose life is always exposed to danger. So, does that mean people you've tried to kill have fought back? That is a rare occurrence. However, this was different. How old must Anubis be? Like, I, I get a think... new Anubis every 12 years. <laughs> new, Anubis the second, <laughs> or whatever. I, I wonder, like, what that must be like, because he, because he's blind. He has to go get, like, a specific type of dog. It's like, oh, what kind of dog do you want? I want a black dog. Dog? <laughs> oh, anything But because else? he's blind, eventually he gets, like, a yellow lab instead. Darn it. Darn it. <laughs> this isn't it's like, a stealthy. <laughs> it's like, I saw this assassin because he had a Labrador Retriever. Could it be me? <laughs> <laughs> they all sought to seal my lips. Sir Han Dogen, you are a master assassin. As such, could you not have evaded an attack from those three and fled the scene? <laughs> you greatly overestimate me. Without Anubis by my side, I would not even be able to walk about. If those three were to attack me all at once, I would not stand a chance. I see. So even an assassin would fall to superior numbers in a frontal assault. I suppose one could say that. I, Sir Dogen, would have suffered a shameful Also, this is kind of painting his and Patricia's, like, connection in Case 2 in a much different light. Because in Case 2, we just thought, like, he was kind of terrorizing poor Patricia. No, as it turns out, he's basically just like, I remember you tried to kill me back then. Ooh. Well, who has the upper hand now? Yeah. <laughs> so you don't feel nearly as bad That's for That's also why anymore. he's like, I want all the gold in my jail, so <laughs> okay, okay. fine. I know you have the ransom money to make it happen. <laughs> Reunited? So when did you first meet with him? That would be 18 years ago on the 24th of December. That is a rather long time ago. And that's like when Edgeworth was four. On that day, our roles were reversed. I saved the young one's life. There was an unusual snowstorm on that day. The temperature was well below freezing. I took Anubis for a walk in the snow. It was perfect weather. <laughs> That's when Anubis noticed something and started running. I followed after him and found a car. 
I had great difficulty opening the door. It had frozen shut. In the back seat, there were two young children shivering from the cold. Two no children. Else? Had they remained in the car for an hour longer, they surely would have frozen to death. Why... Why two kids, no parents? I brought the two of them to a nearby orphanage. Is there anything about Dogen's story that concerns me? There's, There's something. something. Why two? What concerns me is... The, the number of children. The model of the car? <laughs> That's stupid! There were two children in the car. You're sure of that? I may have been 18 years ago, but I remember it clearly. You couldn't see, but I, I led them to the orphanage. <laughs> I held two hands. There were two children in the car. There is no mistaking it. Does the good prosecutor have a problem with that number? Right now, the number of children isn't what I have a problem with. Are we done talking about this subject yet? What concerns me is... What? You don't know? It would not be the model of the car, it'd be the date. The 24th of December, 18 years ago. Oh, that's Are you sure about that? Is that too long ago for it to be a child? Is that what he's saying? There is no mistake. C could that mean? I know. The significance behind that date. Um, what shows the significance of the date when Dogen found the children? What happened 18 years ago? Was that? IS-7 incident. Um... What was that again? Great British Bake Off. Oh, right, British Bake Off. That day, a certain incident occurred. A sculptor was murdered. Ah! During that incident, two young boys oh, went missing. Those stupid kids that I forgot about! <sighs> the sons of the victim, Isaac Dover, and the culprit, Dane Gustavia. Yeah, I was wondering where those were gonna come back. We never did find out where those two boys went after the case 18 years ago. I thought. What, did, did Gustavia just park the car and leave them to die? Maybe. Interesting. Oh, they were the sons of a victim and a culprit. It all makes sense now. What makes sense? Yeah, this is where everything starts tying together and it's amazing. Gotcha. One of the youths was bound so that he could not move. Mr. Dover did that so Mr. Gustavia's son couldn't come to the contest venue. Indeed. Gustavia was using his own son as a taste tester. <laughs> to think that was what transpired. Neither child seemed to recall what had happened. They lost their memories. The acolyte told me this when we were reunited 12 years ago. The pair were placed in an extreme situation on the verge of freezing to death. That trauma led the both of them to suffer from amnesia. I think that's a good thing, honestly. Neither could so much as remember his own name. So they didn't even know that they were the sons of Mr. Dover and Mr. Gustavia. Indeed. While we cannot say it conclusively, the probability is quite high. However, we still don't have enough information to deduce the Mastermind's identity. Dogen, would you please continue your story? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Dogen and the Acolyte. I continued my correspondence with the young Acolyte even after entering prison. Recently, that has all come to an abrupt halt. However, it left me quite concerned. Um, 18... Pull up the organizer. I want to see if we have a certain profile. Do we have Isaac Dover's profile? Or, not Isaac Dover. Do we have, um... Yeah, Horace Knightley. How old was he? 24. 18 years ago, he would have been... Do the math, he would have been 6. He would have been 6. I'm wondering if it's him. Because, mm. because Dogen was like, why don't we play chess? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. And like, and like, Horace Knightley's just like, okay, like, what? I don't know this guy, but sure, I like chess. <laughs> no, I think that's exactly it. Furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago were all drawn into incidents one by one. I grew more and more curious, since so I absconded briefly from the prison. <laughs> By that I mean I broke out. It was laughably easy. You, the guards suck. They all have also, weird Also, Patricia Rowland was gone, so it's No like, order. It's not like they had a warning. Hey, Ryan! Ryan! <laughs> all I had to do was firebend, get thrown in the cooler, <laughs> and take it apart. <laughs> Those involved 12 years ago were Patricia Rowland, Blaise de Best, and President Juan's body double. And Miss Roland was the warden of Dr. Dr. Pepper's Dr. Pepper. Mr. 
Dogen's prison. <laughs> I blackmailed the warden. Yeah. That woman had tried to kill me. Perhaps the good prosecutor has already deduced the reason. You murdered President Juan. However, the world still believed he was alive. If you were able to prove the president was a fake, both Patricia Rowland and Blaise de Best would have been in danger. That is correct. And I had heard the proof with my own ears. Yeah, so one one kid is is um blah blah blah. blah. I'll be waiting in the courtyard at the orphanage at midnight on February 9th. Even if it's just once, I want John to be able to meet you. I'm sorry if I'm being selfish, but I'll be waiting. It's a dog. I feel so bad for President Wong. Yeah. He's like gonna give him the Mozilla doll. Yeah. Who might you be? My apologies, but I am presently waiting for someone. <laughs> I am well aware of that. President Juan, are you not meeting with your son? However, I do not spill blood needlessly. You may relax. I seek only the president's life. It can't be. But please wait. I'm just about to meet my son for the first time. I'm sure this will be the first and the last time. Please, at least wait until we are finished. I had thought the president would beg for his life, but he was of a different sort. Officially, the president had no son. However, he shook his head and said, This illegitimate son was his, and he intended to recognize him publicly. Furthermore, he claimed that he had already made preparations towards that end. Would that son of his be the boy with horns over there by any chance? How do you know he has horns? <laughs> I see everything. <laughs> the dog told him. The dog's like, with the horns. Boy with the horns? Wait, you can see John's horns? <laughs> there is no need to see them from the moment I escaped from prison till now. I have been closely lending an ear to your voices. He said that the president made preparations towards recognizing his son. But the word preparations alone would be insufficient for blackmail. That's it. There was one thing that could prove Juan's words, the will held by the House of Wayne. It was also proof of his trust in us. His son's existence would have been revealed to the world. The name on the recording, the mention of preparations, and the will in Zane Fa. <laughs> Why are we, like, working with him, by the way? This is weird. Because we are working together to find the truth. Together, they suffice to make the warden bow to my words. With those three pieces of information, one could prove the identity of the double. By using John. That's right. All they would have to do is a DNA test on John. And if the, if the body double would not be his father. John's like, bro. Are you chill? <laughs> so, the, so the real president implied was actually that ripped. And then the body double has to wear the anti-fat suit. I thought that was weird when we were in the, I was like, I think... I was like, this seems a little weird. But whatever. I, I freaking love this game, though. It's so interesting for the story. It is interesting. The president blocked the first strike of my knife with something soft. As pieces of it fell atop the snow, I struck once more. This time, the blow proved fatal. He, like, strikes the doll. He's like... And cut off the horn, probably. Yeah, to cut off the horn, and he's like, A new base, can you show me where the president is? <laughs> so Dogen cut off the Mozilla doll's horn. None but I heard his final words. Only myself and that child knew of the president's secret son. Dogen has my favorite testimonies, though. I continued my correspondence with the young acolyte even after I entered prison. <laughs> it was Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> In other words, you contacted him from prison. He was my one phone call. <laughs> that is correct. I mean... <laughs> Clearly, Dogen abandoned his family a long time ago. I don't think he's he like. He doesn't have one. Right, but can you imagine being like, ah, oh, Auntie Susie, I just <laughs> <for> Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> this turkey is delicious. Like, oh, Dogen, what what have you been up to? I killed three people last week. <laughs> oh, well, sorry, I, I, I asked. Uh, I uh, killed it on the sewing <laughs> machine last <No>. week. <laughs> Work is going very well. <laughs> also, I got a new Anubis. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. A post office box was used. Post office box? It would allow one to send and receive letters without revealing the recipient's location. I want to meet a real dog Anubis someday. <laughs> I feel like, Ugh. We've met Atticus the dog. He was Atticus great. the dog was cool. 
I could not use a form of correspondence that would reveal the Acolyte's location. There was someone keeping watch over my correspondences, after all. You must mean the prison warden, Patricia Rowland. Could you be more specific about the nature of your correspondences? Well, they were mainly moves for my correspondence chess matches. Correspondence chess? If I recall the person you were playing chess against... This might be hard to believe, but Dogen's chess opponent was... <gasps> Are you saying he was playing against Mr. Knightley? Wasn't it Horace Knightley? We certainly found the correspondence chess memo in Knightley's cell. Correspondence chess memo jotted down in the organizer. We're still getting case two evidence in case five. Does that mean Knightley Boy was the kid from the IS-7 incident? Could that really be true? That's what I deduced. Is there any evidence connecting Knightley to the IS-7 incident? Well, I mean, if he if he was uh, playing chess with with uh, somebody, anything else that's connecting him? Okay, nothing there. Oh, that. Well, that doesn't connect into the IS-7 incident. And the safe at the 51st floor storeroom. Maybe it's just the chessboard? <laughs> yeah. This was all that Knightley left behind. Could there be a clue hidden within? Which should I investigate? The rain or the chessboard? What? What ring? There was- he was wearing the ring, Frank saw it, like, tried to steal it, remember? Back in case two? Yeah, I mean, I- uh, the, the ring? This ring is... Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? Mr. Shields, please take a look at this ring. The, this pattern is- it's Pierre Hoquet's! I thought so. He had Mr. Dover's seal turned into a ring. However, why would he have this? Shouldn't it have been held by the police as evidence from the IS-7 incident? After the incident, the seal was returned to the victim's next of kin, and Mr. Dover's only family was his son. But since no one knew where his son had gone to, it took a while to get it to him. I'd, he I'd heard that the police had finally found him and delivered his inheritance, but... So the seal was thereby safely delivered to his son. And then, he turned the seal into a ring and wore it on his person. Knightley's mementos data updated in the organizer. So, Mr. Knightley was Mr. Dover's son? The police aren't fools. I'm sure they did a thorough check before handing over the seal. If someone involved in the IS-7 incident was his chess opponent. Knightley, huh? Then that must, man must be the mastermind behind this case! No. But Knightley is dead. He cannot be involved in this incident. How about that? The only one who could be the mastermind was himself a murder victim. What about the other kid? But a dead guy can't be the culprit. There's no way that's right. It certainly is strange. In that case, who is the culprit? There's two children, dude. Recently, that has all come to an abrupt halt. It came to a halt? Now of all times? Quite odd, is it not? Anubis told me again and again how odd it was. That scary dog talked? Was he like, something's odd, woof? Ruh, bro. <laughs> I can understand Anubis' heart, even if he does not voice his thoughts. Um, okay then. There's something I'd like to ask, just in case. Your scary dog's staring at me right now. He's not saying, I'm hungry, I want some meat, right? <laughs> Perhaps. P Perhaps? It seems she's not much good with the assassin's dog. I mean, nobody would be good <laughs> with an assassin's dog! Good boy, good boy, there's a good boy. So then. I, I, <laughs> I wonder, before Dogen was in prison, because how long had he been in prison? Only like a few years, right? Um, so it's implied Edgeworth in like his early days as a prosecutor was the one who got him convicted. Okay. So um, no more than ten years. No more than ten years. So, <laughs> I wonder, like... Actually, no, no more than like... 
seven years. I wonder what he would have been like living in his house. Like, what if kids trick-or-treated there? <laughs> great like, costumes. I can't see them, but I'm but sure I, they're great. The dog Here, just take a by. yard of tweaks. <laughs> Don't tell anybody where you got I it from. I make lots of money at my job. <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, my correspondence with the Acolytes suddenly came to an abrupt end. Furthermore, those involved in the crime 12 years ago were all suddenly drawn into random <laughs> incidents. Almost like it was a game of sorts. <laughs> that certainly does seem too much for a mere coincidence. The body double of Dijun Huan, the president of Zane Fa, faked an assassination plot. Patricia Rowland, the prison warden, murdered Horace Knightley. And Blaise de Best, the chairman of the PIC, murdered Jill Cray. Come to think of it, as I have been investigating these cases, I have felt the presence of a some force behind the scenes. <laughs> Even within the prison, I could tell that this was no insignificant event. I grew more and more curious, and so I absconded briefly from the prison. <laughs> you absconded briefly from prison? I cannot forgive such a criminal act. You stole your way out of prison? I can't forgive you such a thieving act. <laughs> Relax, no one was hurt. I merely have connections that allow me to set foot outside. How? B but even so, you can't just escape from prison, pal. Arrest him, arrest him. That won't be necessary. Once my business is done, I shall return to my cell. You trying to make fools of us? A prison isn't the kind of place you would just enter and leave at will. <laughs> the wolf may say that. But one can see that the wolf and his pack also share an interest in the tales of my past. <laughs> Agent Lane, Detective Gumshoe, there are still a few things I must ask Dogen. Please postpone matters until then. Yes, sir! I knew you'd say that, Mr. Edgeworth. Damn it all! But I'm not taking my eye off you for a second. Writing letters in Braille can be a rather enjoyable pastime. Excuse me, but you wrote your letters in Braille. Indeed, for I possess the tools necessary to write in Braille. Also, how he could is, I read he's, otherwise? His chisel, yeah. Wow, so you need to use tools to write in Braille? I never knew. Then, would you please tell us what you wrote? Everything. Letters, of course. Love letters to my old high school crushes. <laughs> and also the movements of the chess pieces. He wrote the movements of the chess pieces by hand? That statement is... Intriguing. So then, how does your handmade dog piece move? Okay, that question can wait. So then, what did you do when the letters stopped coming? It was very boring. <laughs> Within the prison, I grew increasingly concerned about the Acolyte's whereabouts. Okay, okay. Um, even so, I don't really get it. Who exactly is this Acolyte? Indeed. Dogen himself has not yet made that clear. Clear. What's important is the thread con connecting Dogen and this acolyte, their correspondence. And not just the letters, we should pay attention to the means that was used as well. Braille? Well, this was not written in Braille, and this was sent to Knightley. And this was their game. Yeah. Why are you lying, bro? <laughs> I'm certain you said you wrote your letters in Braille. Correct. The good prosecutor must know that I am lacking in sight, do you not? The correspondence chess letter we found had been typed out using a word processor. What? That cannot be. What do you mean? So someone went out of their way to retype the letters on a computer? Could another person have acted as a middleman between Dogen and Knightley? What do you mean? Dogen wrote his letters in He's Braille. Short. Yeah, he is. He looks like E.T. <laughs> <laughs> Kill President. <laughs> he does! Especially on the upper screen. Look, like, his wrinkles look like his eyes. Oh, yeah, he's like a full head shorter than Knight. Knightley's also tall, to be fair. Knightley's like six feet tall, probably, though. Not like six, seven. Dogen wrote his letters in Braille. However, by the time it reached Knightley, it had been rewritten on a word processor. We must assume that some middleman rewrote those letters. And the reverse can also be said. That same somebody might have taken the letters Knightley wrote and re-delivered them to Dogen. Yes. Frank saw it. That is indeed true. 
<laughs> the, the original killer is the mastermind. That would be kind of amazing. I would love that. Core spot is chess battle updated in the organizer. I feel like that would make you also love the series even more. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that's why I'm wondering. Knightley and Dogen both communicated for a certain individual. Dogen, were the letters that reached you? They were in Braille, of course. So Knightley Boy's letters must have been transposed by that same person as well. So somebody knew Braille and knew English. Yeah. Oh? Then that somebody must be the mastermind behind the case. Please let it be Frank Saw it. You're I don't saying want... there's someone else who's the mastermind behind this case? I don't want uh, the kangaroo boxing guy <laughs> to be the mastermind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jay Albert. Jay Albert. <laughs> then who the hell is it? Dover's son, Knightley, is already deceased. In that case, there is one more youth that we should consider to be the mastermind. You mean Dane Gustavia's son? But who the heck is he? Please let it be Frank Sot. If Knightley is Dover's son, then Gustavia's son must be. Well, we're the only friends either of us has had since childhood. Wait, are you kidding he me? He was the same as me. We never had real families. It can't be. Could it? Could it really be him? Mr. Edgeworth, what is it? You've gotten all pale. I figured it out. The identity of the mastermind who's been controlling this case from the shadows. What? Who in the world is it? I don't want to believe it myself, but it is someone we all know quite well. The mastermind is... Based on that voice, it was either Simon... Gumshoe! It was either Simon Monkey or it was Frank Saw it. Is Frank Saw it choosable? No. <laughs> then it's the... Monkey? Monkey? Why? The mastermind behind this that case... That guy is dumber than a brick. He sent a letter to Jill Crane, which deceived Blaze. Furthermore, he kidnapped John and eavesdropped on us. However, of all his actions, the one I have not been able to get out of my mind. His face does look like it, but I thought, like... It's how he brought an unconscious K to the roof. Why, though? Why, indeed. The giant monster. Huh? Did you just say something? That's right. The key to exposing the mastermind is in the monster's true form. Ah, oh, I almost forgot! Um, if you'd like, uh, please come to our next show. I'll also be performing in it. The Very Big Circus is always fabulous and fun for all ages. Miss Swift, there is something I would like to ask of you. What? You mean me? You said that you recorded the sound of Muzilla spewing flames. Would this decisive evidence of yours be something you recorded on that tape recorder? That's Mr. Edgeworth for you. You're good at figuring things out, aren't you? It's the sound of Muzilla spewing out fire. This place nearly became a sea of flames. That's right. I ain't actually seen it with my own eyes, though. Could you let us listen to the tape? Sure thing. There we go. This sound, it's as I thought. So, it seems that my reasoning was correct. What does that have anything to do the with it? The true nature of the monster and the mastermind. All of my logic is coming together. Miss Hart, you said that you captured a giant eye on film, did you not? Sure did, right here in this photo. Though we cannot confirm it like this. Detective Gumshoe, yes sir! Lend us your film analysis device. Okay, but um, what do you want to analyze, sir? This photo, please. I'm on it! Is there a new clue in this photo? Is it in the eyes? Zoom. Yeah. Freaky. Th this is... See? Ain't that Mozilla's eye right where I said it would be? Heh. <laughs> I see. I have finally grasped. The true form of the giant monster that was being controlled by the mastermind. Giant monster? What's with the voice? Uh, are you admitting it? You are, ain't you? You're admitting that the giant Muzilla is real! No, this is not Muzilla. This is the eye of a different monster. Please have a look at this. It's a flyer for the Berry Big Circus. Huh? This is... 
Precisely. There is a rather large balloon with the head of a lion pictured here. The eye is not the same, though. This balloon oh. is the true identity of the giant monster. In addition, the sound Miss Swift recorded, which she believes to be Muzilla spewing flames. Miss Prosecutor, don't tell me. You're gonna say something that'll shatter my dreams of a scoop. Not hot air balloons fly using burners to heat the air, right, sir? It sounds like static, though. Precisely, Detective. The Mastermind used this monster of his to bring Kay to the rooftop of the Grand Tower without using the elevator. I'm very confused still, though. Wouldn't that mean that the Mastermind is someone connected to the circus? He's a member of the circus, Nightly's friend, and Dane Gustavia's son. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? An apprentice beast tamer? Heh. <laughs> He's no amateur. Why is his hair red, though? For the beast he has tamed is none other than this entire case. Simon Keyes! He is the mastermind behind this whole incident! Mr. Keyes? Was really behind it all? No way! I don't believe it! I mean, we trusted him! How could it all have been a lie? That's just heartbreaking! Okay. Hmm? What is it? It's Simon Keys. Hey, you stop! What do you think you're going? <laughs> the boy with horns is rather perceptive. The good prosecutor has done a remarkable job. Now that I have heard that, I have no further business here. What? Wait, Dogen! And that's how Mr. Edgeworth died. Damn it! Where'd he vanish to? Mr. Edgeworth, are you okay? Yes, just, just I'm fine. There. However... That guy... John? That Dogen guy, he's the one who killed my dad, right? There's no question more difficult to answer. However... There's no use in denying the truth. Yes, John. You are correct. He'd pay for this! I swear he's gonna pay! I... I'll make him pay it myself! John! You mustn't finish that thought! Prosecutor Edgeworth, please pay us no mind. Sir! I've put out an APB on Dogen! All available police units will be searching for him! You heard the man, kid. I don't mean to be heartless, but we need to hurry, too. So, Mr. Prosecutor, where's the mastermind right now? He's probably at the circus. Agent Lane is right. Our top priority right now should be catching the mastermind. He said he would be practicing. He is most likely at the very big circus tent. But first, Agent Lane, I have a request. A request? What is it? Now that we've identified the giant monster, our next order of business is to capture it. The moment we arrive at the tent, I need you to locate that specific item post-haste. And Detective, I ask that you perform a follow-up investigation on the kidnapping incident. Roger that, sir! Mr. Edgeworth, I want to help out too! Hmm... In that case, you'll be in charge of calling for backup. If he is truly the mastermind, we may require assistance from a certain someone. I met him so many times, yet his facade always fooled me into sympathy. He may have got the better of me in the past, but this time, I'll settle it once and for all. I just want to say, that twist is one of my favorites. Really? Yes. I... Mm, I wish it was someone else. Because it doesn't, currently at least, it doesn't make any sense why. Oh, yeah. Keep in mind, we still have, like, the entire rest of the game where we're just confronting him. Yeah. But here's the thing, like, I never saw that coming. I like, mean, I didn't see it coming of either, all, of all of like, matches up. Of all of the, like, twists of, like, the villain is actually this person, this is the one that surprised me the most. The one that surprised me the most, I mean... And the reason for that is because in case two, he was the defendant, and in every other case, it's like, once you get the defendant innocent, they're innocent for good. Yeah. That's true. This, though, it's like there's so many things that don't line up, such as, like, hair color. That doesn't line Easy up at die. all. Easy to die. Easy to die. Okay. Um, it, it seems weird because we haven't seen any signs of his other personality mm -hmm. whatsoever, even in the previous case. And Regina's never said anything about it either. Right. It seems weird that he would go out of his way to do all of this? Mm -hmm. For what? I don't know. Does he want to be the president's body double? Like what? <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. Like, what all, is this? Pretty much all of this is gonna get answered. I'm in sure the future. it does. It's and just it, right oh, now. Man. I'm like it's sitting weird. 
Okay, well, once once we get to the next part, oh man, next part is my favorite part of the whole game. Oh, And wow. one of my favorite parts of the series. It's, it's so freaking good. Dang, okay. All right, look forward to that next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.